Hey everyone, today I want to show you guys some options to spice up your manicure, like something you could do to just highlight a more normal nail polish you have, and some options, some ideas. So I'm starting off here with a black base, please ignore the ring finger for now. And the first option, the most simple one to spice up your manicure, just use a top coat. Pretty simple, but pretty effective, uh, very easy as well, and something you can do on top of any color, so pretty versatile. Here I'm using two examples, so the first one I'm using this kind of glittery, kind of hollow top coat, and this one is very discreet, it has like very small particles, but you can go from this to like super larger chunks of glitter, and you can see it brings up the black a little more, it gives a little bit of a shine, it looks a little bit like a starry sky, so over black it shows off a lot, but if you want to do under a light color it will be a little more discreet, but still you can see there's like something extra there. And another option is using the iridescent top coat, like this one I have, it has purple shimmer, the way to tell, like if you just look at the bottle, it looks pretty white, like a white polish. But then when you look in the light, you can see the shimmer that it has, which is the purple, which is going to come off a lot over black. Other than specialty finishes top coats like this one, you can use a regular polish that is iridescent on its own, and that will also work. I have some that have like a blue shimmer, and it's supposed to be like a pink with a blue shimmer but it shows up a lot on top of black. So it's another option as well, because you can have it as a polish and also use it as a top. One thing with these shimmers that I don't super love is you gotta be super careful with the application. As you can see, it's super streaky, it's not forgiving at all. But yeah, that's another option, just as easy as applying the polish. And it spices up your manicure. Any color works with any color. The iridescence will vary a lot how they look depending on the base color you have. So keep that in mind. You can always test it before you do it. But that's one easy, simple option to have. Going to a little more advanced, but it looks harder than it is. It looks more complex than it is. Are these little like powders that you can get and apply with a little makeup brush, a little like eyeshadow brush. And those you can find like in cosmetic nail polish stores or even online. You have many options, so I have this like chunky glitter one, but I'll also show you guys a little iridescent one I have as well. And you get a little bit on the brush, you can see this chunky one, I struggle a little bit to get it, and you just rub it on. One thing to keep in mind here, the polish has to be a little tacky for you to do this. Over dry polish is just not going to adhere to the nail. And if the polish is too wet, you're just going to end up dragging it, so it won't work either. But I think this is something that gives a very cool, very different effect. It, it makes it look like you worked harder than you actually did. And I just love brushing the thing over the nail. I don't know why, I find it super fun. I just love it. <laughs> and this chunky one, I think it looked awesome. I, I love the way it looked, but it did mess things up a lot. It's very messy. There was glitter all over the place. So one thing to keep in mind with the type you're using, there's some of these that are like multi-chrome, they are finer powder so they don't make as much of a mess, but this one in particular was like glitter all over the place. But it's also an option, again, as I mentioned, looks harder than it is. I think it's almost as simple as just applying top coat, a little more messy, but in terms of effort and skill, still very simple and great results. I just like, this looks gorgeous, right? And you can do it all the nails, you can do an accent nail, you can do just a little bit of a detail on the nail, not all over it. I've heard some people review and mention that the top coat kind of ruins it. That was not the case for me. When I applied it, it still looked just as shiny, but depending on the material used, you could have something. The material of the powder and of your top coat, it could be the case that when you apply it, it kind of has a dulling effect. It looks a little dull. It kind of takes away the shine. And for cleanup, you can usually just use acetone. I've seen people that also use like rubbing alcohol. But for me, since I usually have acetone, I'm just using that. But glitter is a little bit hard to get. So I said, I'll just wash my floors. <laughs> to compare here with the other powder I have, the, the other one I have is a little more iridescent, I would say. And you can see it's much finer than the chunky glitter one, but the application is the same thing. Make sure your polish is tacky and just rub the powder in. This one and the more multi-chrome ones, they are not as forgiving as the previous chunky one. 
as any metallic. You can see every little detail on the nail, every little bump and divot. And also if there is any part of the nail that you don't apply, the powder is going to be pretty evident. So you got to make sure you're all over it. One thing I didn't do there is also make sure you use a brush to clean off the powder before you do clean up and top coat. I did not do that. I forgot, but that's something that helps with making it look cleaner as well. But even though it is a finer powder, you can see that it was way less messy than the chunky glitter one. Another option, just as easy as the top coats, because it is a top coat, is using a matte top coat. So you can use it in just one nail or your entire hand, all your nails, or you can use it as just a detail, like on the edge of the nail, like a French manicure, but with a matte top coat. That's another option. This one is also not as forgiving, similar to like the iridescent or the powder we were just seeing. If you have any sort of texture on the nail, it will show up. And if there's any part where you don't apply it, it will also show up and it will be shiny. So that's one thing to be mindful if you're doing matte top coat, make sure application is on point. Another option is some polishes dry to a matte finish. So you could use your matte top coat on those and that way you don't have to be as careful because the polish underneath is already matte. And you might say, why do I want to use it then if it's not to get the effect? To protect your manicure, that would be one of the scenarios where you would use it. If you don't want to make it shiny, that's why you want to keep it matte. You would use a matte top coat. Now getting a little more advanced, we have nail stamping as an option. Uh, if you've seen the other videos I have, I love nail stamping, but it is a little more advanced. You need more materials, you need the stamping plate, the stamper, you might need a uh, specific polish. I'm not using, I'm using a regular polish here, but to get better results, I'd want stamping specific polish. And it's a matter of like skill and practice. Anyone that's ever attempted nail stamping, sometimes you will scrape it off and try to get the design with the stamper and nothing comes off. And it's normal, so sometimes that happens. So stamping requires a little more practice, a little more ability, a little more patience as well. So that's why I'm classifying it as a little more advanced. But it's also a very good option if you just want to do something different with your nail. You can just stamp one detail on it or you can do stamping on all your nails with like a pattern or something. On this one, I'm using this like honeycomb pattern. And you can see since I use metallic polish, metallic polish dries really quickly. So it was very crumbly when I stamped it and some of the edges didn't quite pick up. But then what I did was I did some glitter placement. I'll show you guys next, which is another option for something you can do to spice up the nail. And here's an example of why stamping requires more patience. You have to do the cleanup. You have to make sure the stamping is correct. In here to do the glitter placement, what I did, I just applied some top coat to get like a sticky base where my glitters could stick to. In retrospect, I should have used clear polish because the top coat was going to dry really quick. But since the area I had to apply was very small, that was not a problem. But if you're using more on the nail, maybe using a clear polish would be a best option. And I found this like hollow glitter that it was the exact size of the honeycombs and kind of like similar shape. So I just used that following the same pattern and completing the gaps I had. To pick up the glitters, I'm just using my steel stick. The top coat that was at the end of it helps it me, helps it be a little more sticky. So that's one way you can do to pick up. There are some tools specific for picking up glitter that are a little sticky on the edges. I don't have any of those. Uh, one thing I did was I attempted like a homemade solution of getting a stick, a wooden stick and putting candle wax in the end. It kind of worked. You could pick up, but the wax kind of rubs up against the glitter and it kind of smudges it. So I didn't quite like that. So yeah, glitter placement is also a work of patience, but I just love the result. I've seen people that do designs with like multiple color glitters and they just like place it as a design on the nail. I love it. I think it looks great, but it is a lot more work, a lot more effort than just applying a top coat, for example. And last but not least, I would say this is more like in the intermediate side of things, is using these like gold leaves 
you can find it in like cosmetic stores or online and they're pretty simple to apply on this one i would recommend more of a wet base than a tacky base if you don't want to risk smudging the leaves with the polish you can do a clear polish a clear polish layer in between and these i think just look great they have it in, they you can find them in gold and silver in like rose gold i personally think the gold looks best but it, i want to try the silver one i got some silver one as well the only thing i wanted to get like smaller pieces but i was finding it really hard to break these down i think it really depends on the material you got i've seen some people that get like the finer pieces much easier than i was getting because i wanted to seem like a fade design so it would start very thick near the cuticle and then the gold would start to fade as it progressed but i wasn't able to get the smaller pieces the way i wanted but what, one good thing about this design is and the reason why i'm doing on the cuticle area is you can really disguise kind of a not so good application or a not so good cleanup you can kind of use the leaves for that so that's a good option as well and this is another one i've seen people say sometimes depending on the top coat you use you can have a doubling effect the one I used worked just fine. I did see some effects on the little iridescent powder I used. It seemed that when I applied the top coat, it kind of dispersed the powder. That was the only one where I saw some sort of effect on it. And yeah, those were some options I wanted to show you guys of some more different things you can do with like nail polish and manicures. And here at the end, I want to show you guys some things that didn't work. Uh, just as lessons learned, also I think it's important. The first one is with the iridescent topper. When I first applied it, I usually like to leave a blob at the middle of the nail and then I'll start spreading across my nail. And when I did that, the initial blob generated a stain you can see there at the end, because as I mentioned, this is not so forgiving with the application. So even when I tried to cover it up, I went way too thick with it, uh, but it just generated this irredeemable blob in the middle. So one thing to be careful there with these non-forgiving toppers. The next one is the ring finger that I mentioned for you guys to forget about in the beginning. My idea was to do a gradient uh, neon on it and use some nail vinyls. So you'll see here I have the white base. I went in with some neon gradient. The reason why I did the white base is so that the gradient would show up better if I did just a gradient straight up on the naked nail doesn't look uh, as vibrant so having the white base helps with that but then i apply the nail vinyl directly and i try to sponge on some black polish so my idea was that the neon would show up where the nail vinyl was and you can see here that that did not work uh why what happened here i did not put a top coat before applying the nail vinyl i just used some quick drying drops i put my finger and I was like, oh yeah, this is dry, should be fine, but no. Uh, so I didn't put that protective layer of the top coat. So when I pulled the vinyl, it picked everything up. So I want to try this design again using the top coat correctly. I was just trying to rush things and that's why it didn't work. So lesson learned there that you should always have the top coat as the protective layer for the vinyls. At least for me, it didn't work when I tried to do it without it. And I tried to then do a different option where I did the black base, use the nail vinyl, and then apply the white and the neon, but it didn't look so good. I removed the vinyl before doing the neon, so it looks super smudged. It looks awful, terrible. Don't recommend it. And my idea was to do the neon kind of below the black, so I just want to go back to the original idea and try it again. Probably in a future video, I'll show you guys. And I hope this gave you like some inspiration or some ideas or, or at least some lessons learned on what not to do. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.